G'day YouTube, Turbo Tristan here. In today's video, it's a bit of an educational one. We're gonna teach you why you need an adjustable pan hard rod on your early model Commodore or any vehicle with a solid rear axle. I've even made some props. So this one's gonna be a very educational video. I'm gonna show you why you need to replace this bar on your Commodore, especially if it's lowered. Stick around and I'll teach you everything you need to know about adjustable pan hard rods. G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. This one is another educational one and uh, hopefully you guys will learn something just like I have. Up until a week ago, I wasn't too familiar with how and why these work, but I kind of figured it out a bit on my own, asked a few questions, and I happened to have the help uh, at my day job with someone who we call the Stig. That's actually his name, it's not a nickname, and he is a suspension guru. Now, one thing that I noticed, and I went and asked him a whole bunch of questions, was about this, this pan hard rod here. Now, it's got one mounting point on the vehicle, and then one on the diff. Now this is factory in all, solid axle, so not IRS, just solid axle, early Commodores, Falcons, a lot of muscle cars have this. And uh, what it does is it helps to center the diff where it goes and the rear axle in the back of the car. Now there's plenty of other pickup points for the suspension. So we've got the spring, the shock, so the shock will also hold it in position. We've got the lower control arms and we've got the upper control arms here, but there's nothing really to stop it from moving side to side, except for this bar here. Now this bar is on a little bit of an angle. It actually mounts up here and then goes on a diagonal over to the far side of the diff. This is set at a certain height for the factory vehicle. If you lower the car, it's gonna push everything off center. If you lift the car, it's gonna pull everything this way. You lower the car, it's gonna push everything that way. So I asked myself, you know, how am I gonna combat this? I intend to get this car hooking and booking and going pretty fast down the quarter mile. Won't be breaking any records, but it'll still be moving by the end of it. And I don't want the back of the car pointing one way and the front of the car pointing the other way. So we need to go for an adjustable pan hard rod. And what that does is pull the diff back into alignment. It's very, very important. I even went to the effort for educational purposes to make this uh, MDF cutout. So here we have Hectic Dose, VL Calais with a K, and it's definitely a turbo. We've got the Venetians, and we've got the diff and the fat rubber underneath. And there we have in white, we have the pan hard rod. So here's the car at its exaggerated factory height. Now if we slam that, watch what happens to the wheels. They tuck under on the passenger side and stick out on the driver's side, meaning that the wheel and the diff is off center now. Now to fix that problem, you'd need to shorten this bar here to get the wheels when they're here back underneath the car and aligned properly. And why is this important? Well, there's a few different reasons. You don't want the car to always kick one way under power and sort of sit sideways. You don't want to have to be correcting the car when you're just trying to drive in a straight line or having it sort of crab walk around and have the back of the car wanting to go this way. Um, and the other one is you want a nice, even, perfect wheel alignment and you don't want uneven wear, all that sort of thing. So with this bar, it's actually on an angle as well. Now I have it on good authority that when the car's jacked up like this, the angle will be pushed and it'll slightly be twisted. So uh, it'll be pushing the diff on the driver's side forward. Now when the car's on the ground, it's sort of gonna settle that with gravity and also power. And when the car's moving forward, it's gonna keep that straight anyway. So it's still gonna drive straight, it's just gonna be off-centered the lower that you go. 
Now, this particular VL isn't very low. Uh, it's probably around, I don't know, two inches or 50 mil lower than standard. It's not absolutely dumped, although that does look cool and I do like that look, but it's just not practical for what we're going for. So I'd probably be only out, you know, a handful of millimeters, three, four, five mil uh, offset on the diff. For the money that it costs to replace this, in most cases you'll find one of these for under under 150 bucks. I'm going to be selling them on my Spool Up website for closer to 100 bucks a pop. So it's one of those things. Why wouldn't you? If you're going to lower your car, you want to keep your wheels and track all straight and all perfect. All right. So here we have the car is just starting to get under its own weight on the hoist. So the full tire contact patch is on the ground and I'm just going to take a rough guesstimate to say that's around about where the standard ride height is of the VL in the back. So now with my lovely assistant, I'll get her to drop the hoist and we'll see how much it moves across with the non-adjustable pan hard rod. Wow, that's uh, quite a bit more than I expected. And you can see here we've gone over five mil. So that might not seem like a lot, but five mil at 200 kilometers an hour of having the back sort of moved or steering for you is quite a big difference. My non-mathematical calculations tell me that I should probably make the pan hard rod, the new adjustable one, around two and a half mil shorter than the factory one, and hopefully we can correct that uh, five mil movement. I'll go check it on the other side just to be sure, and then we'll uh, swap it over, make some adjustments, and get it on the car and see if we can fix that problem. It will still need to be wheel aligned, but this is just uh, pointing out the issue and taking steps to fix it. And when we can, we'll get the car wheel aligned professionally so it matches the front and we're driving straight at no matter what speed we're going. All right, so here we are on the passenger side and we'll just try that same experiment again. We're at about 53 on this side and then uh, my lovely assistant will drop the car down. Gosh, that moved it a fair way. And we're down to about 48 mil. So yeah, big movement. Let's stick that adjustable pan hard rod on and see if we can help sort that issue out. So jump ahead a little bit and I've taken off the pan hard rod. That came out super easy. It was just a couple of 19 mil bolts. And then what I've done here is I've got the new pan hard rod and the old pan hard rod side by side and I've just put a bolt through each hole to get the approximate length sorted. So they're basically the same length now. We've got tons and tons of adjustment here on this arm. So what I'm going to do now is stick that on. I'll probably still need to bring this one in about 3 mil um, just by eyeballing it. And then once it's up and on the car, I'll bring that back in tighter about another five mil. And once it's on and I've adjusted it three, three to five mil, I'll do a couple more tests up and down, uh, get, see if I can get the diff to be back into the middle uh, where I think it needs to be. And we'll see how it goes from there, but still take it to a wheel alignment shop and get the wheel alignment done. But this should definitely help uh, get the back of the car pointing in the right direction. So I'll need two hands, chuck this up, get it done, and I'll show you the results in just a moment. All right, so the bar is fully installed now. One thing to note when you are tightening up rubber bushes is make sure you tighten them with the load of the vehicle weight and at ride height. Um, with the rubber bush, if you tighten it up and then put the weight of the car on it, that will twist and then it'll also cause the bush to prematurely wear and um, flog out real quick. So what I did, um, because I don't have a four poster hoist with the, you know, where you drive on and drive off, which is what most suspension and tire places use. Uh, what I did is I got the old wheels, put them under there, put the whole weight of the vehicle on there. It sat at ride height and then I tightened up all of the bolts or nuts. So 
Now that's good to go. Um, what I'm going to do is I've put the locking nuts pretty close to where I want them to end up. Like I said, I'm only going to do just a little bit, a couple of mil here and there, and then send it off to get professionally wheel aligned. But this is a 22 mil here in the middle. And I'm just going to pull that so that they go tight. And then that should be enough. And I'll nip it up, stop it moving. And again, this is not a wheel alignment. This is not what you should be doing. This is just the installation process. What you should be doing is taking it to get professionally wheel aligned. Once this is set to where you're happy with it, before you take it off to the wheel alignment shop, just to make sure it doesn't move around on your drive, just nip up these two chrome ones against here so that they won't turn against each other. The only way you can then move this is if you loosen those off and twist the center nut. And there you go. That's how you install an adjustable pan hard rod to the back of your solid axle old school muscle car. And it feels weird saying that these are a muscle car now, but they pretty much are. RB power. So this is one mod that every early muscle car owner, Commodore, Ford, GM, Holden, Mustang, whatever it is that you drive, Chrysler, Hemi, anything with a solid rear end that has a pan hard rod, which they all should, make sure you get an adjustable pan hard rod, especially if you've lowered it or put fat tires under the back or tuned any of the suspension at all. You don't want the rear end to be walking side to side and moving under load. Even under squat, it'll push it across as well. So you wanna take all of that into account um, with your suspension on your old school muscle car. Thanks for watching. Make sure if you haven't already subscribed, we're at 13,000 subscribers, trying to get to 50,000 this year. It's a big ask. I'm halfway there, so I don't think it's gonna happen, but let's try for 20,000 subscribers. Don't forget, spool up, plenty more coming on this build. I'm gonna get stuck into finishing off the interior very soon, and then it's on to the turbo engine build, forged pistons, rods, the whole box and dice, big turbo, send it, let's go. But thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to spool up, bring the boost, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.